Tam is our next speaker. He's going to talk about Ruby Garbage Collection. As best as I can. <laughs> Whoops. All right, so this is an introduction to Ruby Garbage Collection. Uh, I chose this topic because I didn't know anything about it, and so I wanted to kind of challenge myself and learn something new. Um, I had about a week or so, and work got busy, so hopefully what I present to you will at least add to your knowledge. Um, did to mine as at a very brief level, but or shallow level, I guess. <laughs> but my name is Andrew Kim. I work here at Yellow Pages. I'm on the same team as Chris Lemke, uh, the consumer tools team, and we build internal internal tools for uh, managing our data. Um, so yeah, like I said at the beginning, I'm not an expert. I just learned about this recently. Please keep this in mind when you're asking questions. <laughs> okay, so garbage and garbage collection. Did you know that the average American produces about 4.5 pounds of garbage a day? It's a lot. Yeah, we are no <laughs> Okay, that's about 1,640 pounds a year. You know, there's a picture of a landfill. So maybe it's just kind of like a public announcement, you know, try to limit your garbage in the real world as well. <laughs> um, so did you also know, actually, I should have asked this, but the average Ruby program produces around 30 kilobytes per millisecond. How many of you knew that? Okay, yeah, that's not a real statistic. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know how you could measure that or anything, but I try to tie it into my uh, talk. <laughs> okay, so reminder, I'm not an expert. I don't know this stuff. Um, this guy, Nar Nar Narihiro Nakamura, he knows. He's the expert. Um, he gave a talk on the garbage collector at RailsConf 2011 in Argentina. And he's the main uh, CRuby contributor, um, and he basically wrote the garbage collector for Ruby, so um, at least for Matt's Ruby, the MRI. Um, so he has a blog, and he has a couple videos. This is actually a link to one, um, and it's really insightful. That's where I get most of the information. Oh, uh -oh. sorry. Um, on uh, parallel, or where I learned a little bit about parallel marking, which will come up later. So basically, the first thing you need to know about Ruby and its memory um, concerning the garbage collector is that all objects are on the heap. So everything lives on the heap. So when you instantiate a new object on any local variable, whatever, it gets put on the heap. So I don't know if you can see this, kind of can, but this is taken from Joe D'Amato. He had a cool blog post on how memory is allocated in Ruby. Uh, when you have a Ruby object, you have a heap slab um, where it's called from malloc, basically. And that from there, you have in there is like a slot that points to a Ruby object. And that represents a section on the process heap, which then correlates to a space on the physical realm. So this is kind of like the layer, kind of like the abstraction of what's going on underneath inside Ruby. So are all the slabs the same size? Uh, yes, all the slabs are the same size. Um, and so it'll, it'll allocate them in chunks and dynamically as you need them. So when you need a new slab, it'll allocate them. And I'll go over that in a bit. Um, okay. So this is part of the reason why Ruby takes up a lot of memory. I mean, I'm sure if you talk to Orin at least, uh, he'll say, Node is so much better. It takes up so, so much less memory and all this, and you know, Ruby's dead. But yes, it is true. Ruby does use a lot of memory. And I think we know that from our Rails apps. There's a lot of objects that are instantiated, and all that takes up a lot of memory you know, on our machines. And Ruby's garbage collector, the one stuff that manages this memory, is part of the reason why Ruby is slow. Okay? If you hear that, that's kind of like the general buzz around, like, oh, you can't use Ruby. It's slow. It doesn't do a lot of things. Well, you can blame it on the garbage collector, um, even though I don't really agree that Ruby is slow. And the reason why is because lots of objects means lots of work for the garbage collector to do. Um, it has to, and so I'll go over the kind of the algorithm that Y has to do a lot of work. So Ruby 1.8 and up to 1.92, they use this. It's this pretty standard Ruby or garbage collection algorithm called mark and sweep. And what that does is basically, so once again, if we remember the diagram from before, each object just think of a bar in this picture as a uh, reference to an object um, that's been allocated. 
And what Ruby keeps track of internally is a list where all the free memory spaces are. And anytime you need a new object, it just pops the first you know, uh, reference on that list and gives it to the object. And then as this list, and this list basically shrinks as you're allocating new objects. And basically, I don't have a diagram for it, but what happens is when you, this list, actually, I think I explained it here. Right, it just takes the next free slot. And then, uh-oh, my computer froze. Oh, no. It's garbage collecting. I need more RAMs. Oh, crap. I really am stuck here. Hold on. Sorry. Let me comment on some code. So I'm trying to use this new uh, presentation thing called Big, and I tried to play with it a little this morning, and I think I broke it. Let me comment. Oh, yes. Yeah. Here we go. Right. So. Uh oh. Here we go. Okay. All right. Sorry. Thank you, Chrome. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I, I was I was trying to control the font size and now some of the logic and yeah. So the text might be kind of small and unreadable on some of the slides. Sorry. Um. So when you're out of free slots on that list, it goes to the heap. Um. And it's kind of does this thing where it detects you know garbage collection. What it does is it marks using some recursive algorithm to see what objects are still live, what objects are still currently being used. And then it marks those. And then the ones that aren't mar marked are called dead. And basically, it throws those unused objects back onto the free list. Okay, And so that's how it repopulates that free list. And when that list runs out, you know, it goes back, it scans your entire heap, marks everything that's live, and then goes through again and pushes stuff back onto the list. And this is called the mark and sweep algorithm. It basically does, it cleans all the things. And it died again. Are you serious? Oh wait, okay. So the question that was asked um, earlier is, if there's, so even if after you do the mark and sweeping, if the free list is still empty, what it'll do is it'll allocate a new, one of those heap slabs. And so that's when your Ruby program grows. When you see the memory growing, that's what it's doing, is that free list is unable to be you know, um, repopulated. So it's going out and just grabbing a new slab in memory. Okay. So this is what happens during garbage collection. This is why it's slow. No Ruby code is allowed to run when the garbage collector is running. Because it says stop. Okay. Not allowed. <coughs> Hence, the slowdown. Um, and this can happen anywhere in your code. The moment you need a new object and there's no space in the free list, all stuff stops while the garbage collector runs. So this can happen at any point in your code base. You can be doing, you know, I equals zero and boom, you know, garbage collection. So that's Ruby 192. Okay, to improve on this, um, Narihiro, he implemented lazy sweep, and it's also known as mark and don't sweep. So, so for those of you that are uh, blessed to use 193, you get to upgrade your Rails apps and stuff. This is what it does. And man, that is tiny text. Um, basically, each invocation of the object allocation sweeps the heap until it finds an appropriate free object. So that concept of the free list goes away. And basically, every time you allocate a new object, it skips all the ones that are already marked, and it just kind of looks for the next free object that's not marked. OK, so it's doing the marking while it's looking for a free object. And then what happens, and I, once again, I don't have a diagram for this, but I'll try to explain as best as I can, is that once everything is marked and it can't find a free spot, it flips all the mark tags. And so it kind of like flips the world upside down, says, oh, everything's free, but I'm going to run this little function where I'm going to mark all the live objects. So it does another mark all the way through the heap. It marks only the live ones. And the ones that are left unmarked, those are then just assumed to be free. And then it can start again doing the marking and not sweeping. So it just calls again, OK, I need another object again. Skip all the ones that are marked. 
find the first one that's not marked and take it. Okay, so there's not that whole like pushing onto the free list. It just flips the switch, marks all the ones that are still alive, and then just uses the next one that's available. So it kind of keeps like an almost an internal list. Okay. So some of you might be thinking like, is that more optimized? Like, you know, is that better runtime? Um, oh, sorry, I explained it all here. Um, I found this little thing about being lazy. Hard work pays off in the future. Lazy list pays off now. Okay. I don't know if that actually applies here, though. Um, so lazy sweeping improves the response time of the GC. Okay. So now when the GC halts the world, it stops all your code from running. It doesn't have to do a lot. Right? It just flips the switches on all of them, finds the live ones. That was only like the first half of the previous algorithm, and then it's done. Right? It's very quick. So the worst case time decreases. However, it decreases overall throughput of the GC because now to allocate a new object, it's got to do a little more. It's not just popping off the next one on the list. It's got to do a little marking along the way and finding the next one. So now the whole object allocation takes a little longer. Does that make sense? So I actually did a test. I wonder if I can do this. And you'll see. So he wrote a little small Ruby script to show this in action. And actually, um, let me try. Um, so if you look here, I'm in Ruby 193. I'll do, I'll do the 193 version first, I guess. Actually, Ruby. OK. And I'll show you, um, I guess. The fragmentation code. I've never seen that before either. I didn't know that you could do RPA. Oh, info. Yeah. That's super oh. I'm like, hey, okay. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so basically, this is his little script. It enables a profiler on the on the garbage collector. It sets some constants, just some big numbers, and basically it inserts a bunch of objects into this H um, right here. What, and what is H? H is just a new object that he's creating. Ruby lets you do that, like dynamically. So, uh, and then a thousand times again, it does some little like math, and then to find like basically like a random big number, or not a random, but I guess in a sequence, and then he mods it with the length to put it in H again to set it to nil. So he's H has got to be an array. Then. H is an array. Oh yeah, H is an array um, right here. I think heaps, and it's passed. So, right, it's passed. So basically, he's inserting a bunch of objects into this array, and then he's nilling them, like all those keys again. So he's making them dead so that there's no reference to them anymore, and then they have to be collected by the garbage collector. And he's doing this over big arrays and doing it 100 times, right? And basically, and then at the end, it's going to spit out the report. So if I go Ruby-D, and this is Ruby193. Okay, so if you look up at the top here, it invoked the garbage collector 15 times. This is just every time it shows you some timestamps and how much um, like data was collected and stuff. And then basically it took 0 0.202 seconds to complete, or that's how much time it spent in the garbage collector. Um, if I move to 192, oops, I gotta do use, yeah, sorry. And then I run it again. Um, you'll see that the total time I spent in the garbage collector is um, 174, and it did it 16 times. So this was his proof that 192 is actually faster overall, but then um, individual instances of the garbage collection runtime is actually quicker, if that makes sense. OK. Um, <laughs> like, it might, it's somewhat similar maybe to the case of like quick sort versus like a merge sort, where the quick sort in the best case is in log in with like a small constant right. and is fastest, but in the worst case is quadratic, it's just horrible. Right. Whereas other sorting algorithms are like not as, quite as fast on average, but have a much better worst case performance. Right. I, I think that's the same principle as being applied. Um, so that was the example. So yeah, Ruby one I'm slower, like what the heck? Um, but yeah, I think for the web though, overall GC time, GC time may be more, um, like as far as like the life of your server, maybe the overall GC time is 
um, longer or it spends more time there. But then per request, you're looking at a better average time so that it's much more, more consistent. And so like in the middle of a certain request where all of a sudden the maybe the previous request, the garbage collector didn't have to run, so that response was quick. But then the next request comes in, all of a sudden, oh, I got a garbage collect. And then it stops and it's like, boom, like 500 milliseconds there all of a sudden. So I think that's kind of the case that he was like, you know, going for, which is the average case, reduce the time so that you don't get these spikes in response times in a lot of these apps. Okay. So I kind of had a test, but then I wasn't able to run it properly. And then having two servers running on my local host was actually killing this MacBook. So I'm not going to try to run it. <laughs> Anywho, some advice. So what does this all mean? I know that as Rubyists, you know, we like to be, we don't delve too much in the theoretical, but we like to, um, what does this impact the real world? Um, so there's a couple, uh, I guess, system configs, variables that you can, or settings that you can change. Um, this is from 37 Signals, is what they do when they run their rail servers. They change the Ruby, Ruby heap minimum slot, which is basically how much a heap how many variables a heap can hold. Um, they change it to 60,000. Normally that's 600,000. 600, yeah, normally that's just 10,000. So, or six, 10,000. Yeah, 10,000. So, you know, they, uh, they update those sizes so that the garbage collector doesn't have to run as frequently. Um, however, they did say with a caveat, like since your heap sizes are larger, it is going to, um, make your garbage collection per in, per time it runs, it's going to be harder because it has to go through a larger heap, but then it has to run much less frequently. So uh, that's why they do that. Um, there's the malloc limit. So malloc is getting the um, you know chunk of memory to put your slabs in, and they raise that a lot. And then I really don't know what this third one is for. Um, Maybe it's the, the amount that has to be free. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe once it doesn't wait till it gets to zero free blocks. Right. Oh, okay. It gets to, because otherwise, if once it got really low, it just constantly. Right. Right. It That's true. Zero. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So they increase that default as well, and you can just set these, um, you know, on your servers. And I think there's tutorials online like how to do it with the different deployment systems, like Passenger and things like that. So. Um, I think there's a lot of resources online for that. Um, another, some more advice, you know, be mindful of your objects. Don't go around setting nils everywhere and then leaving lots of junk for the garbage collector to run around. I think someone mentioned earlier, use symbols instead of strings. I think there was even one, if you want to get really crazy, I think the slot sizes for strings are limited to like 23 characters or something like that. So if your strings are longer than 23, they take up more than one slot, but they take up two slots. So if you want to limit your string sizes to 23 <laughs> characters, and you know, I don't know. I mean, that, I think that's a little ridiculous, but you know, that's yeah. The you know, that's one of the. I don't know if that's really advice, but, um, but yeah, just remember creating objects and just throwing them away are not free. They're not free. I know in Ruby, like you know. You know, we we get to do whatever we want. Like, I mean, we create objects anywhere. You don't have to like instantiate variables. So, um, you know, just be mindful where you're doing that, especially in your loops. I think dot each is better than the four blank ends. You know, but using dot each is a better practice um, because that helps reduce the, the actual like meta objects that are created for that, um, like the block, like passing the block and things like that. So, you know, there's just those kind of optimizations that you can do. Here's some bad advice. Um, if you want a response to be really fast and not care about memory, you could just disable the garbage collector. Um, you know, you could put an around filter on your request. And then on the before, you GC disable, and you yield, and you enable, and then start it. And so basically, you don't have to worry about it in this request. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what it's doing at the gc.start. Well, without stopping. Just, you try to So I think this will run after your render, even. He's saying don't disable it. Just oh, make just. It, make it happen. You don't want to disable it if you hit the limit and it's time to run. But what you were talking about is one request affecting another request. And if you're able to sort of process a request and then let some other process in your unicorn passenger or whatever, like, you know, oh. handle the thing while you 
you're saying, I'm not ready for the next one because I'm going to do my GC now. Right. Like, that, basically. Mm. In fact, that I still don't totally know how to do that with Rails at all, how to, without forking, which is the simple Right. Way. I think um, that'd probably be, like, either the only way. Or, well, that won't help the current process. Yeah, or, I mean, like, maybe, you know, that's why you have multiple instances of your server, so that... GC disable, GC enable. They're out of GC run. <laughs> GC run now. I think GC start. Right? G, that's what GC start, start does. does. That's you what can GC, do it without yeah. disabling and enabling it. Right. Okay. Does that so, actually help? So yeah. This is, probably this is putting off the garbage collection until we run out of memory. <laughs> no, 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 after after you've responded to the request. So what if you try to respond to the request but you do run out of memory because you have any garbage? That's why that's why this is this bad, is bad, is bad advice. That's why he said laughing the whole time. Yes. There's no no situation where you ever disable the garbage collector. You probably should not be disabling your garbage collector in your code. I think it's useful for a lot of script script writing. If you're writing a, a script that's just gonna run once uh, I've heard of people finding out that the garbage collection is just taking forever, and right. just tell them it's a script. It doesn't matter. Just, just turn it off. Just let it go. Yeah. yeah. Does the process just get bigger? Say? Yes. And then once you enable it, it'll it won't shrink back down. You'll just have a lot of free space now. So I think Ruby doesn't actually give back memory to the OS until you actually kill it and restart it. So that that could be yeah, a problem. We have actually used that in um, certain situations in specs. I don't know if it's still uh, the situation anymore, but there was something about the way our spec allocates really large numbers of things during runs mm -hmm. that it then gets rid of. But if your garbage collector runs while they're all instantiated, it's going to be much, much slower. Right. And so, it's basically factory growth, because that just creates so many different yeah. projects. Yeah. So we had a few cases where spec suites were getting really, really long, and we've saved thirty percent of time on them by by basically doing that around example groups. Wow. I have okay. to look up the code because it was it was a project from three years ago. But but then you know you could run into that problem if you're out of memory, you're going to tank your machine. Right. So better to run out of memory while running tests than in production. <laughs> wouldn't do it in production code, but in tests. Oh, you guys are going to love my next slide then. <laughs> So I've totally done this. <laughs> it was way before this. It was about a year ago. Um, and it totally worked. We had one of our responses that was like kind of building a feed and it was dealing with a lot of different um, types of objects and like mashing them together. And uh, I think I should save like half a second on the response time by doing this. It was awesome. What framework is it in? It was in Rails. Yeah. Um, <laughs> My boss is right there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, it works. Okay, so that was uh, Ruby 1.92 and 1.93. What's coming up in Ruby 2.0? <coughs> this is soon. Uh, <laughs> so hey, and this text. So there's gonna be parallel marking. Uh, right now, the garbage collector not only does it stop the world, it only runs in a single thread. Okay. Uh, once again, the guy I mentioned before, not Nahu, Nahu Hero. He's uh, working on parallel marking, and those will utilize multiple cores. So um, garbage collecting will be parallelized. And he does some crazy thing where he branches sections of memory and then marks them. And then, like, I don't know. It was crazy. Please watch the video, RailsConf Argentina video. Um, it's online. And he also has a really cool story in the beginning about how he used to work at an ice cream factory making cardboard boxes and how he <laughs> got into programming. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then there's bitmap marking, um, and Pat Shognessy, he has a blog post on it. And what this is, is this takes advantage of copy on write. I don't know if you guys know what that is. I just recently learned about it. Um, basically, when you have multiple threads, copy of what copy on write, or when you spawn a new thread, you want to share as Unix shares as much memory as possible. Right, spawn a new process, right. And then you share the memory, and only when you write to a memory spot, it'll copy that into the new process space so that, you know, it's not what used to happen was I used to copy the entire memory space over, you know, and that's inefficient and it's not, you know. That's not how ZFS works in the file system. Right. So that's why you have snapshotting. Oh, okay. Cool. It's pretty cool. Yes. So that's a really cool feature, and we want to take advantage of that. But the sad thing is with, 
mark and don't sweep, you're marking every object every time your garbage collector runs, and it runs it on the entire heap. So you're copying your entire heap every time, no matter what. It doesn't take advantage of it at all, because you're marking every single object with this, whether it's used or live or not, right? And so it copies everything, so we don't take advantage of that. But what bitmap marking does is instead of marking the objects themselves, it knows where each object lives and then maps that to a bitmap. And so it just looks up the index in the bitmap saying, is this a one or a zero? Okay, that object is marked and that object is not. And so now you can keep the object in the shared memory space and just copy the bitmaps over into each of the processes so that your memory consumption on multi or when multi processes are going, it's gonna be a lot lower you know, and it's gonna be a lot more optimized. So that's also what's coming up in Ruby 2.0. So it's a lot of focus on multi-threading and things like that. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, this is the too long, didn't read. Um, Unix uses copy on write when dealing with multiple threads. This means they share memory and copy that memory when the space is written to. <laughs> okay, I read it. Well, okay, oops, I just explained all this. Hence the name bitmap marking. Sorry, I'm done. <laughs> um, no questions. I'm gonna ignore you over there. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, this, this is not so much a question as a comment, but um, we uh, we were looking at our new relic settings a few months ago, and now our throughput was like sort of 160 milliseconds per request or something like that. Uh, and we saw that half the request time was garbage collection, like 50 or 60 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. uh, and but just by just applying, like we're using Ruby Enterprise Edition, and I think that the environment variables you put up there are actually only available in our, our Ruby Enterprise. Oh, uh, okay. Um, or may, and maybe in 193, we were in 187. Um, but we shaved like 30 milliseconds off our response time just by doing that. And like obviously, as you said, the trade-off is your processors use more memory. Uh, they can be more volatile with memory, especially if you sort of are adding larger chunks when you allocate new chunks. But like the r default Ruby VM is great for maybe running Sinatra, but it's like terrible for running Rails. It's just mm -hmm. like it's not tuned for it at all. In the same way as a default Postgres install, the shared memory on your Mac is not built for running databases. You should always tune how you allocate memory and how much yeah. shared memory is available and things like that. That's an excellent comment. And then also there is a blog post. So one guy, he just did the default what 30 signals, 37 signals gave him. And obviously he has different hardware and different configurations. And he said, you know, by tweaking, and sometimes what he thought logical is, oh, if I just make everything as large as possible, you know, it should be fast. But he said measure everything because it's actually the opposite where one of them actually he had to reduce to increase his response time because it was overloading some aspect of it. So um, yeah, I would suggest definitely like measuring everything when you're definitely like, Checking your memory. Well, you like mentioned one of the values causing the GC to actually take longer to complete. So right. that means you're increasing the spike, the, right. the, the size of that spike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ours was that our process was growing to such a large multiple of the available memory that it was triggering the GC to run multiple times because it continuously allocated new slab. So we just pre allocated a large enough slab that like 80% of our requests didn't need to do government. Yeah. I think in that, that same blog post, the 37 signals. Uh, it's so bad that regardless of what you change it to, it'll probably be better. I think that's right. one of the big takeaways from, that I grab from that. It's yeah. like, oh, wow. So, yeah, like you said, that's what it's messing around again. Yeah. Cool. So, actually, I do kind of want to go back to you. You did have it, Sal. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, my question was um, uh, if you happen to know, uh, just through your research, um, whether uh, Ruby in the future is uh, intending to uh, allow configuration of to use different uh, garbage collection policies, kind of like how Java um, I don't think so. Not that I remember. Okay. According to whatever page I was on, it says that there's going to be a garbage collection API as a possibility. So there is a GC module, like you saw that with the enable and disable and start. I think that came out in Ruby 1.9. Like it wasn't available in 1.8, but I think it came out in 1.9. So I think that's what they're talking about there. Is 2.0 going to remove the global lock? No, I think that still stays. I think that's uh, every garbage collector, I think. Well, actually, no, I take that back. There are other algorithms that do that. But then because it's still kind of like a mark and sweep variant, I think that during that mark phase, it still has to do that. But then, like I said, he is going to try to parallelize that to take advantage of multiple cores so that it's not 
such a long halt the world kind of type thing. Okay. Um, I remember something from a presentation by Amon Gupta a few years ago that he said was true then. I don't know if it's still true in the Ruby 1.9 era, because this was back in 1.8, but I remember him saying that um, that really common pattern where you sometimes are sending a hash of optional parameters to some method where you say options equals empty hash right. in your argument. He said that when you do that, that empty hash gets instantiated every time you call that method. So you're allocating <laughs> a new empty hash for every method call that uses that pattern. Even if you have like 20 of these that chain them down, it gets called, you'll, you'll instantiate 20 hashes. And so just removing all of those, have options default to nil, and then if you need to, but only in the cases you need to instantiate the hash mm -hmm. uh, um, down in the code that that can, that can actually make a significant difference in garbage collection just by getting use of for divine use. Yeah. I think there was another post where like even in between controllers and like sharing things like he was saying like when you inherit from other controllers and, or, and especially like inheriting from classes like sometimes it'll keep references to all of them so the garbage collector can actually collect you know if you have like one instance of a class that's inheriting from like all these other things like it'll still mark them as live and so Sometimes you have to, you know, even sort of keep track of that, just so the garbage collector can actually do stuff and not keep allocating new space. Yeah. Uh, one, one other thing I've discovered for dramatically reducing the amount of memory your app uses is, um, you know, Active Record offers this like select, and you can specify which um, which fields you want to retrieve from the database, and then like Mongo Mapper has a field, you can specify which fields you want from the database. Um, we, we almost always allocate way more fields than we need, especially if you're only going to use an object inside a single function where you're retrieving it. So just like only retrieve the data you need, you can cut down the memory use for those loops and stuff like by 95%. Right. Cool. Is it only? Is it only? I'm sorry, it's in active record as well. Sorry. Oh, it's, it's uh, called select. It's called select. Yeah. Like, blah, 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 where, blah, select, blah. Yeah, so only select the fields. Actually, that's really good advice that I totally forgot to put in here. So I remember that. Cool. All right, I think we're done.